What's up, guys? This is Skylar over at Savage Truth 603. Um, we got a lot to talk about, so I'm going to jump right into it. I'm going to keep these brief. I'm going to try to lay out some bullet points and maybe edit them together in a way that makes it easy to digest, because we all know the, the news out there is anything but easy to digest. So here we go. Peter Strzok. I imagine you've probably heard that name in the news. He's, uh, he's an FBI counterintelligence analyst, I believe is his exact title. Um, he was the lead investigator in the collusion case against Trump under the Obama administration. He was also the lead investigator for the Hillary Clinton email scandal, which, by the way, is still going on. And this is all very connected. Uh, he was in, he was removed from from the investigation uh, in the in the collusion case because of clear bias for Hillary Clinton. Now, this is after the uh, the investigation into Hillary Clinton's emails. So he, he was he was not biased during that investigation. That seems a little funny. Lisa Page also works for the FBI. She's a she's a lawyer. I don't know what else um, she's involved in. Peter Strzok and Lisa Page are connected because when there was a request sent for recorded text messages between Peter, Peter Strzok and Lisa Page, there were five months of these text messages that were that were unavailable. Apparently, the FBI couldn't find them. So. I can fart in my living room and they can tell what it smells like by my smart TV, but they had, they lose five months of text messages between not only Peter Strzok and Lisa Page, but we'll get there, Andrew McKay. So these missing text messages. Uh, Judicial Watch is a, is a, is an organization that I follow very closely. I have a lot of respect for them. They, they hold the government accountable. They file Freedom of Information Act lawsuits uh, regularly against the government when, when they feel like they're not being transparent in the manner that they should be. Um, they do a lot of good things over there, and, and again, utmost respect. Um, this, this, all these missing text messages between Peter Strzok and Lisa Page, the ones that they couldn't find, when, when, when the pressure started to get put on the FBI and the, and the DOJ to come up with these text messages, suddenly they started, they started finding some, and, and the messages were anything but good for Peter Strzok and Lisa Page. They were very pro-Hillary very anti-Trump. They talked about a an insurance plan, which nobody really knows what that's about, but it's 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 all connected to this hashtag release the memo. And we'll, we'll get there. I know I have to jump around a little bit, but it's it's complicated. Peter Strzok and Lisa Page were both removed from the collusion investigation, yet both still remain on FBI payroll, um, which is rather bizarre if they have clear biases against our president and their job is to uphold the law and be honest and transparent and truthful and they have clear biases against our president but they're still in office that makes no sense to me whatsoever but maybe that's the reason that andrew mccabe no longer has a job um it was in the news that he resigned um he was in my opinion he resigned with some coercion from um, Christopher Ray. Christopher Ray is now the acting director of the FBI and has very explicitly said that he is out for truth and justice and will do his job by the book, which is exactly what the FBI needs right now. So you have, we've all heard about this whole hashtag release the memo, and, and I'm, I'm not sure how closely people follow that, but what it is is it's a memo that was viewed by um, some Congress men and women, um, and immediately the Republicans started saying that it needed to be released and that there was important information in there that the American people needed to see. Um, there were, there were comments made such as releasing this memo could change the face of politics forever. Um, that's a pretty, that's a pretty heavy statement considering the history of our political nature. So basically, if the if the Obama administration and and Hillary Clinton's cronies, um, sorry for the burning word, um, if they if they used that fake dossier to get a FISA warrant to spy on on a presidential candidate, that is that's not going anywhere good. If you look at what's what's happened since President Trump has taken office, James Comey was fired. Uh, Peter Strzok and Lisa Page were both removed from. The, the collusion investigation. Andrew McCabe was 
retired early, forcibly, I assume. And there's been a big shakeup at the FBI. Uh, I think that what we're going to find is that that shakeup is going to continue. And I think that 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 memo, that hashtag release the memo memo, um, is directly related to the DOJ and the FBI spying on the Trump administration at the request of Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama. Now, the reason that all this ties together is because if you think about this email investigation on Hillary Clinton, I don't think anybody was was felt like that was a an actual investigation looking for the truth. That seemed like it was just a bunch of grandstanding and, and gesturing to make it seem like they did an investigation when I think everybody really knew the truth about Hillary Clinton's email server and the fact that she was using it illegally and probably communicating with the president at the time. So the reason that it gets swept under the rug is because if you implicate Hillary Clinton, now you implicate the sitting president of the United States of breaking the law and possibly treason. All right, guys, you know what time it is. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Tell your friends. Savage Truth 603, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook. Peace.